Hello Gothic friends, this is Alice and you are in Gothic Land, a place where we talk and learn about all things Gothic. But it's also a place where we develop our critical thinking and where you can learn or improve your level of English or Spanish because the videos are bilingual. So welcome once again to these videos, to these sessions. I'm really happy with all the comments that I'm getting lately and I'm, well, I'm glad that you are enjoying it and that you are sharing and subscribing. So thank you very much. So today, today's topic, goth versus gothic. Uh, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one because it's not clear, because a lot of people have have only half of the information because we have our own perception, because we have our own style. So what I'm going to try to do today is to clarify from my point of view what should be like a holistic way of approaching anything. All right. Remember, I'm a teacher. I'm always looking into the whys of everything to give you the best answer. So how am I going to do this? The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give you all the points so you can see how the presentation, how this video is going to go. So the first thing I'm going to give you is the etymology of goth and gothic. Without the etymology, without knowing what they mean, we are already starting from the on the wrong foot. Okay, so the second thing I'm going to do in this video is to give you seven important historical facts that will give you the relevant information to start working on your own idea of the goth and gothic. The third thing I'm going to do is to give you four aspects that for me helps to explain uh, the goth gothic in literature. The next point is some examples in literature, music and in cinema. Unfortunately, I'm not going to give you anything in art this time, maybe in the future, yes. The fifth point I'm going to talk about is just to give, to give you a couple of curiosities, well, one curiosity really, and then I will close the video with my own opinion. So let's go, let's dive in. Definition of gothic, right? So goth, let's start with goth. Goth, godo in Spanish, is a noun, a noun that was given to the nomadic tribe who fought against the Romans in the late 300s, 100s and early 400s. Uh, Anus Domini. I always get confused with Anus Domini, right? Is after Christ. So there are some discussions going on about if they were Germanic tribes or if they were Scandinavian tribes. This is what Jordan says in the sixth century. He says that the uh, the Goths originally came from Skansa, a little island in in Scandinavia. But this is unclear and they are still nowadays talking about it and they don't really agree because the evidence shows that the language doesn't have the languages don't have anything in common right so goth godo in spanish bear this in mind for later because when we translate godo we don't have in spain godo fashion we have goth fashion so we have inherited the english word which is very interesting Gothic, on the other hand, is the adjective that describes the Goths. It describes a tribe. It describes a lot of other things as we're going to see next. So, what we basically have is that the Goths were a Gothic tribe because they were called Goths, right? Okay. So, let's see, let's move on now to the, the seven historical facts. And you'll see why I'm doing this before going into probably what you really want to know, which is the fashion, the looks, the different types, blah, blah. So, number one, the Goths contributed to the fall of the Roman Empire, as we said before. Second point, that is what marked the beginning of the medieval period in Europe. In Spain, number three, in Spain we got the Visigoths. So these were the Western tribes from the Goths. In the East, they got the Ostrogoths, right? Number four, the Spanish Visigoths, and this is important for architecture, the Spanish Visigoths, defeated by the African Moors, uh, meant that they were in contact also with this other culture and they had an impact in some of the characteristics of the Gothic architecture, right? So all this is to bear in mind for later on for our literature. Point number five, 
there is a general belief that also got transmitted into literature that the the goths were barbarians but okay let's think about it which group which tribe wasn't a barbarian mm, think about the romans think about the vikings the huns uh, which was the tribe that actually moved the goths towards roman grounds they were all barbarians but it's true that gothic literature recuperates this barbaric uh, element to make it one of the characteristics of its literature. Okay, so there's something very interesting here when we're talking about the Roman, uh, uh, sorry, the Roman, the Visigoths, the, that they had uh, their own code. And uh, it's, it's interesting because this code, uh, we have a translation, uh, is back to the 1050, we have a translation, the first one in Catalan, here in Catalonia, so that's just an interesting fact, this is a curiosity. Okay, point number six, the, since they inaugurated the medieval uh, period, Gothic is used to talk about the Gothic style in architecture, which was based on the previous style that was the Romanesque. The Goths also had their own language, which was, which was Gothic. So the Goths had the Gothic language. Can you see where and how noun and adjective keep coming back and forth and, and in which context? So basically, am I saying to you that it's the same? Maybe, maybe. So how do we get from here to literature? And I have to say that this is where it gets really tricky because point one, these are the four points that I'm going to give you now to talk about how they made it, how the term made it to Gothic literature, right? So think about it. The term Gothic was recuperated in the 18th century and it was a reaction to Romanticism that was happening all over Europe. Some of the characteristics of Romanticism was, uh, were the emphasis to liberty, progress, separation, of the church and the state, reason, belief in science, among other elements that you probably now remember in as I'm going on. However, we have to say also that it didn't develop the same way throughout Europe, which partly will explain uh, what happened, for example, in Spain. In Spain, we have a delay in the Gothic, produ in the Gothic production, also a delay in the translations, but this is something to talk about in another article, in another video. When I'm saying article because I always write an article to complement these videos. Okay, so this is a very important point. The second point that is very important is that, as I mentioned in another video, is that for me, the Gothic is the, the Romanticism alter ego, yes? the, the alter ego of the Romanticism or the naughty child, those are my own words because it concentrates or is very worried about the insignificance of man women in front of nature this feeling of awe of the sublime that Burke talk, talked about all the uncanny that Freud also mentioned and not in literature but in psychology and liter literature took this term to define this feeling of otherness of strangeness number three and the Gothic looks back to medieval time, skipping the whole classics. Although they were influenced by them, they skipped the classics. And so this medieval looking back is what brings this mm, barbaric, abrupt uh, idea. Yeah, that, that although it's very flowery at some points as it, as it evolves, um, it explains the main, the basic or the core of the Gothic, which is this taste for the dark, the emphasis on the otherness, monstrosity, fear of death, and all the extreme feelings uh, that somehow make the authors, make the authors be obsessed with certain elements. Okay, all those things that we cannot give explanation to. So the fourth point that we have to say is that uh, it's this is what sets the ground to what nowadays we know as the aesthetics of the Gothic, which is uh, certain fashion, certain facets certain trends, uh, makeup, body tattooed, piercing everything with the dark um, 
right the, the the dark touch that we we all know like for example today i'm a kind of gothic but i don't have a proper label because i think i have my own so anyway so these are the four points so now that we've done all these uh, a little bit of history and how it's going to how it went to literature in the 18th century there's a gap between these the 18th century and and nowadays so what is it that we have inherited i want to go first to the literary arena then we'll go to the music arena and then to the cinematic arena the filmography so in the literary arena and i'm going to talk here in very broad terms because if not we can spend hours with each section and it's not the point so the Gothic production in writing even though there are different periods it has never stopped in fact we are now more active than ever there are more and more people talking about the gothic in in its uh, aesthetics um grounds in the literary grounds in the music in the film in all sorts of expression so uh, in the past uh, you know when we talk about gothic production in the literary arena we can we can go back just to start somewhere right there are many authors and I'm going to leave many behind, but modern writers, we have, for example, Angela Carter, we have Stephen King, we have Shirley Jackson and even Toni Morrison. For those of you who are not familiarized with these authors, you can search them and you see all the Gothic elements. But the Gothic production is always now less, is also explored in newer writers that I really, I'm really proud of, of calling my friends. So for example, I'm going to mention here new writers that are now working on the Gothic and they're not as well known precisely because they're new writers. We have names like Tracy Fahey, we have Georgina Bruce, we have David Castleton, recent authors. In Spain, we have Carlos Rizafón, who uh, died recently. We have Emilia Pardo Bazán or Dolores Redondo, who is very much alive. And other people that are also in the, in the grounds of more modern, more, more modern, sorry, more recent authors. We have, for example, uh, people that I talked to, like Ivan Ledesma, who is also, who wrote or who's writing, um, he writes a lot of things, but actually he writes uh, gothic horror. Right. Okay. So we have some examples here of what's happening already still. Yes. In the music arena, this is quite fascinating and it could go forever too. And I had to really reduce it because it was really long and the discoveries I made were fantastic. But in general terms, uh, Gothic music is any theme or lyric that contains uh, um, romanticism, morbidity, existentialism, religious symbolism, supernatural mysticism. Uh, okay, you can, you get it. You get more or less the idea. So, we can go from medieval music, choir music, to nowadays. If we go to the more recent times, for you to see really in our modern times where we could say that gothic music is really gothic music. We have to go back, this is very surprising, we have to go back to the 60s. And an example of this is The Doors. Yes, I know, you might go, eh, she's crazy. No, The Doors had some gothic elements in the way they carried out their concerts and some of the lyrics that they, that they had. Then we move on to the late 70s and 80s and we have then goth rock. Goth rock that was inherited from uh, the post-punk, okay? So some of the representatives are The Cure, uh, Susie and the Banshees or Bauhaus. And I cannot really stop and talk about them because there's no time. Some of the modern examples are Alice Cooper, Marilyn Manson and what I call the more Victorian Rocky symphonic groups like Nightwish, Evanescence or Within Temptation. Just to mention some, the very proliferous, there are more than these. In Spain, for you to have information about Spain, in Spain in the 80s, we had Alaska y Dinarama, we had El Mago de Oz, just to say, mention some. There's another group that started in the 90s with this gothic church, but then it moved into pop and is Dover and nowadays what we have in the Spanish arena is 
and it's the version of the gothic Victorian opera I was telling you about, like Nightwish, we have bands like the Diabolos and Forever Slave, who to your surprise or who to my surprise, they are singing in English and that's a sign of something that I'm not going to talk about here today. In the cinema, in the cinema we have Obviously, there's an aspect in the cinema that I want to talk about, which is that we talk about horror, we talk about uh, terror, gore, but not gothic. Because no, when we talk about gothic or the gothic aspect in the cinema, we tend to talk about uh, ghost stories. Also because the gothic can happen in more than one of these genres. It can be in horror, but it can also be in psychological thrillers, it can be in crime. Okay, so it... it goes and it touches everything so examples oh i have to say and you know you might hate me or love me for this but tim burton is the king of the gothic cinema cartoon um, stop motion he's the king right there are others in the spanish arena we have for example we have guillermo del toro we have alejandro amenaba there are many many others that are coming out now but these are the main names that probably mm, you are more familiarized with. Right, one curiosity, one curiosity, and we get into the end of the video. One curiosity is that there, there is even a World Golf Day, which is celebrated every year on the 22nd of May. And it started in 2009 after the BBC, a BBC program, Radio 6, started talking about subcultures in English. And then from that moment, they decided to make this a worldwide event. And it has been very successful ever since. From this event, we can see all the different varieties and representations and expressions of the Gothic. For example, we can talk about Victorian Goth, Lolita Goth, Cyber Goth, Emo Goth, Steampunk Goth, and the list goes on when you are looking into Goths and to what they talk about, even the same goths do not know all the extent that the term can have and the variety, there's even bubblegum goth, I mean, you name it. It goes, it touches everything and it goes everywhere. I think it's fascinating, I love it. So as you can see, just to wrap up, is that the difference between goth and gothic are just pure semantics. So goth is the noun, gothic is the adjective. Which one are you? How do you feel more comfortable? If I have to give you my own label, my own definition, I would say to you that I am a traumatized goth because, uh, you know, I've just recently embraced my real soul and said, uh, who cares? Let's go talk about it. Let's spread the word. There are more like you out there. Why are you ashamed of so there's probably a new label and i've just invented it yeah the traumatized goth uh, so okay my friends i hope you have enjoyed this remember that i am working on a brief introduction it's called brief introduction to uh, gothic literature but it really touches everything it touches history it touches a bit of architecture and is the idea is for you to have an overall idea of what the gothic is this will be 45 minutes i'm preparing it i will let you know so keep an eye on this place uh, follow me on twitter follow me on facebook alice in gothic land write to me alice uh, uh, alice gothic land at gmail.com sorry and tell me what you think today about this video please so subscribe like share i love how you are interacting with me i'm really happy i'm really excited so please let me know your thoughts and answer the questions answer the question do you consider yourself goth do you consider yourself gothic have i missed anything out please let me know in the comments and i hope to see you very soon so see you for now thank you my gothic friends bye bye take care